Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we don't have problems. Today, we're going to start learning about ocean water and life. So what's in our ocean? It's a fascinating topic as we dive deeper into the water of the oceans and then who lives there? I know, you know, dolphins and whales, but there's so much more. First of all, we're gonna talk about the ocean. What's, what's up with the ocean? Probably the most glaring thing we know about oceans is that it's salty, or we talk about a term called salinity. Now, when you think of salt, I know what you're thinking of is you're thinking of the chemical sodium chloride. You might remember from chemistry class that's NaCl. And though most of the salts in the oceans are salt, sodium chloride, there are many other salts. But first of all, how salty is the ocean? Well, they say it's around 3.5%. Or actually what they say is 35 parts in 1,000. Or the way they actually write this, it's kind of cool. I didn't really know this until I started teaching this. It's 35 zero over zero zero. Percent, that's right, that's out of 100. This is out of 1,000. It's kind of interesting. So anyways, 3.5% of the oceans are made of salts. Now I know when you think of the word salt, like I said a minute ago, it's sodium chloride, but salts are things that are dissolved. So salinity is the total, the total dissolved salts in the oceans, which includes many other chemicals. So if we look over here, what we can see is this graph shows us so much of what they are, right? You've got waters, the 965 grams, the sea waters, 35% or 35 parts per thousand. But if you break that out, notice that most of it is the, the sodiums and the chlorides. But then there's these other ones, sulfates, magnesium, calcium, potassium. And this interesting thing is you can find every element from the periodic table inside of the ocean. Some are so micro amounts, they'd be unbelievable. There's more gold in the oceans, true, true, right? Than there is like in the land. But it's so spread out, it's almost impossible. It basically is impossible for us to extract it from an economic perspective. So here's an interesting question. Where's the salt come from? Uh, why are the oceans salty? Now, if you've been sticking around in our course, you know that there are sediments that they're flowing from the ocean or from the land into the ocean. And guess what they carry? They carry sediments. It comes from weathering. A couple other things they also come from. So it's getting saltier because things are being added that are dissolving. There's also something called outgassing. Under the ocean, there's lots of underwater volcanoes and they're outgassing. Gases are coming out from the center of the earth containing chemicals that then dissolve. And so the ocean is, gets its saltiness from the land and also deep within the earth. Which begs an interesting question. Why isn't the ocean getting saltier? Right? We got weathering, we got outgassing, stuff from the bottom of the earth that you add, add, add over millions of years as you get saltier and saltier and saltier and it's not getting saltier. So the explanation that I understand at least, is a couple of things. Animals play a role, especially the crustaceans, because the crustaceans, crustaceans <laughs> they take the water and they make the shells of their living organisms, and then they die and the shells sink to the bottom. So that's a way to take some of the saltiness, if you will, out of the ocean. Salt spray on the coastlines, puts it back on the coast. And there's another thing, probably important, chemical processes, chem, chem, I see chemical, C-A-L, processes. You might remember uh, in our last unit, we talked about the nodules that are on the bottom of the ocean that they're beginning to mine. Those were salts that came out of the ocean. Now they're in these hard rocks, so they're not dissolved. They're just turned into a rock. And then also via plate tectonics, there's a lot of thought that uh, the salty stuff, they go down tectonic, like in the subduction zones. And so these things, they take away the salinity, and these things add to the salinity, and, and scientists believe that the salinity of the ocean has been pretty consistent throughout millions and millions of years, so there you go. So we know where it comes from, and we know where it's going. Though salinity is pretty constant in the, in the oceans of the world, there are some discrepancies and some differences caused by individual things that happen. Let's talk about what causes these things. What's gonna cause the salinity to change? One is precipitation. 
if it rains or snows or whatever, that's going to add fresh water to the ocean, which is going to decrease the salinity because there's more water uh, to the same amount of salt that's in the ocean. The next one is, is kind of an intriguing one. People don't really think about this, the ice caps. So you may not know this, but when you freeze salt water, you know what happens? You get fresh water. So if you look at an iceberg, it's only fresh water. So as water freezes in the polar regions, it takes just water out, leading more salt. So this will increase the salinity and make it saltier, right? Another one is evaporation, but you can figure this one out. As water evaporates, it's going to leave behind more salt. This also increases because you have the same amount of salt, but the water uh, leaves. So that means the salt stays and then runoff. So runoff is, you know, like a, a river coming into the ocean. And this, of course, will decrease the salinity. So we live close to Houston, Houston, the river goes into the ocean and near there we have water. In fact, sometimes we even call that water salt water. We call it brine. Briny water is water that is salty, but not as salty as the ocean. So these factors affect the individual salinities in different places. Uh, it's interesting when you, when you talk about this is that it kind of leads to our graph over here. So we look at this like super cool, awesome graph. Let's talk about what's going on. Now, if we say at high temperatures, you should get, uh, you should get uh, uh, more evaporation, so it should increase the salinity. But notice at the equator here that the salinity is low. The reason it's low there is because at the equator, there's a lot of rain. So precipitation causes it to decrease. And then you see the two peaks on either side. That is where you have lots of evaporation, right? In the middle there. And uh, in the polar regions, you'd say, well, why isn't it higher in the polar regions? Because this is an overall salinity. So that doesn't all perfectly work. It's just going to be localized near the, the icebergs that you're going to see that. And uh, hopefully that gives you some, this graph here, this explains this graph. And then we didn't talk about specific, you know, locations near the mouths of rivers that you're going to get runoff. I mean, the salinity can be very, very differently. So for example, like we said, it's like 35 parts per thousand is the average. But if you go close to like the Red Sea, you know, near Egypt, it's like 40 parts per thousand. And then if you go to the Baltic Sea, which is an inland sea, it's only 10 parts per thousand. So there's also variations on the based on the region that you're in. Probably in the Baltic Sea, there must be lots of runoff and there's not a lot of interaction with the open ocean in the Baltic Sea. So anyways, salinity of the oceans. We know a lot. You know a lot because, well, you're awesome. Houston, we'll see you in class.